welcome to another tutorial with RS Logics 5000. Today we'll be using the emulator. I'm going to show you how to use jump to subroutines, subroutines, and then return. This is all with parameters. So go ahead and open up your emulator if you haven't already. And then start up your RS Logics 5000. Let's create a new program. We're going to use the emulator. We're going to use version 20. That's what I'm using. You don't have to. You can use others. We'll call this JSR SBR RET. Training tutorial on JSR processors in slot zero on mine that is yours could be different mine set up it's in zero uh, our slings is in four and so forth minimize it really don't need it I uh, just need it running so the first thing we're gonna do is go to your main routine and well let's go ahead and add another routine we're going to call it SBR we'll put a description if you want but alright the first thing I'm going to show you how to do is how to jump to a subroutine so this will just will make it pretty simple um, I'll go over here to give you an example. I'm in SBR right now. We're just going to throw uh, normally open and an output in here. New. We'll call it test. SBR. And new tag. New SBR. Light. Okay. We have that set up in our subroutine, and we have nothing in our main. We're going to go ahead and we're going to download this. Oh, excuse me, we're going to select the path we're going to download to, which is on the virtual chassis. And we're going to go ahead and download. Okay, give us an error. Let me just delete this empty rung, and we'll try it again. Then we'll go. <clears throat> we're gonna go to run mode. All right, we'll go to our subroutine, and we'll just toggle it. You should see it update. Oh, it's not gonna update. Why? because we didn't call this subroutine from the main routine. So let's open up the main routine. Open. First let's untoggle. Let's go to the main routine. Let's add a run. Let's just type in JSR, enter. Let's pick that subroutine. Enter. And let's finish it. Now we're going to immediately come in and scan our main and in this main task we're going to scan our main routine the only thing it's going to do is it's going to go to to the JSR and it's going to jump to the next uh, to the subroutine named SBR if we go over to SBR now if we toggle the SBR now we update this routine because we are scanning the routine that's pretty cut and dry now we're going to work on passing parameters so we're going to go offline we'll go back to the main routine we're going to go ahead and we can leave this already here but let's add just a few things we're going to copy this oh, hang on Let, yeah that'd be fine control c we're going to v v we're going to have three different we're going to go to the same routine, but we're going to use three different input parameters. So let's make a new uh, control tag. We're just going to use uh, 
product dent for now. So it's going to be product. We're going to keep it as a as a dent. And we're going to pick the first one. Uh, we'll just throw this one down in each one. Come in. We'll change each one. This way we can change to the different parameters that we're going to enter. Alright, so we'll go over your JSR. We're going to oops, look right here. Right click. And then we're going to add an input parameter. Okay. What we're going to do is we're going to put a value in here. And this value, we're going to just going to put a value of 1. When you hit enter, it adds another one. You can just remove it. We're not going to use that one. We're going to do the same thing. We'll go down here. We're going to add an input parameter. This can be number 2. And we'll do a number 3. Add 3. And we'll remove this one. Okay. Now we've got product 0, product 1, product 2. We're going to jump to sub or to the subroutine and we're gonna pass along a value of one. If product one is selected, we're gonna press a value of two. If product two is selected, we're gonna press a value of three. So you're gonna go over to your subroutine. We're gonna go ahead and we'll add uh, we're gonna add a subroutine, an SBR. This is a an input, so we're gonna add an input parameter and this is going to be product type. Let's put product type. Select enter. We are going to need this to be new. It's a dent. And we're gonna put an we're gonna put a no off at the end of this. I will check it. delete this we don't need that one this is the first it's the first uh, you want to this has to be in rung zero now we're gonna add three or we'll add one more rung right now we're gonna put an equal and then after it we'll have an output And then this is going to be product type because this is going to be our input value that we sent to this routine. And then we want to make sure that in order for it to be product one, that it's going to equal one. So now we'll just copy this, but I'm pressing Control C. I'm going to press V or con Control V. Come on, Control C, Control V. Oh. All right. Well, we'll just copy and then paste and we'll paste one more I don't understand why that wasn't working we'll change this value to 2 and we're going to change this value to 3 we're going to oh, cancel I'm sorry we're going to add a couple more tags here Alright, so we have this set up so that if I select product 0, it's going to jump to the subroutine. Well, it's going to jump to routine named S SBR. It's going to send a value of 1 with it. It's going to come in, it's going to collect that input, it's going to store it into product type. And then its product type would be here below. And then if it, if we get that one value here, then we're going to fire this output, which is PRD1 for product 1. Let's go ahead and download that, and we'll see how that works. So we'll download it. Yes. 
All right, we're in run mode. We don't have any products selected. Uh, the value is zero. So we'll go ahead and come back over here. We're going to select product number one. So now we're jumping. To, now we're scanning the subroutine. And it came in. It stored the value of one here. Value of one equal one. And we went ahead and drove our output. Now we stop. Now here, here's where something you'll run into, and you'll want to do this, because we're still going to want to pass a value into here, and we're probably going to want the value to be zero. So we're going to want to scan the subroutine anyway, so we can keep this value off, because the last time it scanned, it stored a one into product type. Well, we're no longer running that subroutine. The subroutine isn't updating. It isn't changing anything in here, though it did leave this output stuck on, and we don't want to do that. We want to make sure that we keep this off, or anything in here off, if we don't mean for it to run. So, we're going to go offline real quick. We're going to add one more run, and we're just going to put a JSR in. We're going to jump to the same subroutine, and we're going to add one input parameter. And it's going to be zero, so we don't want to we want we don't want to update or turn anything else on. We just want to make sure that we are always scanning this routine. You don't have to do it this way. There's other ways to program and do things. This is just something. So I'm showing you the difference, so you can actually see it and understand that we are moving these values over to the subroutine, and the subroutine is using the value. So we're going to remove this one. So that's fine. We're going to go ahead and download this. Yes, we want to go back to run mode. All right, so now we go back over to the, to the routine that I named SC, or SBR, and now you can tell there's a zero there. Let's go back over to the main routine. Let's run the uh, product code two. We'll go back over to the other routine. No, I did I did screw up. We don't want to call this because then we're going to scan this send that information the same time we do this and always cancel itself out so edit we're going to put in three normally closed or and then we'll use these values and we will finalize those edits that way we're not calling that subroutine down here now if we go back you'll see that we are now on product type 2 so I hope, you I hope this is helping you understand how to use uh, the JSRs with input parameters. Now we moved zero back over and we're not updating. Now we're going to go ahead and we're going to return one more thing and go offline. I'm going to show you how to return a value from this back to this routine. So we'll go offline. We'll add a rung. We're going to put in a return. And we're going to add a return parameter. And we're just going to use this one. So we're going to send this value back every time. So we're going to come in here and add a return value and we're going to name it uh, we'll just say valve and valve will work right click new valve now we passed a uh, yeah we passed the boolean back so we're going to make sure that this we, might, we line them up it's very important to make sure they stay the same. We don't need this one. And we'll go ahead and come down here. We'll add a return parameter. Drag this down. Same thing. Add return parameter. Drag it down. 
And finally, the last one, add a return parameter. And we'll drag it down here. Now, we're going to put in one more run. We're going to put in an examine if on. And then we're going to put um, an output. So we said this was the valve. So we'll put that here. And then this one, we'll just throw a new tag and we'll call this solenoid1. Select create. Let's go ahead and download all these parameters. Go back to run mode. Valve's not on. We're not selected any product. Our updated value is zero. And we're returning a zero because it's off. Now if we go up, we'll do product the top product. We'll turn it on. It should should have passed a one over to the product type. And it did, so we're running product one. So now we're going to we're going to turn on product type 1 and it's going to come back with a value of 2 and it's going to turn on uh, product 2 output and then we're going to take that value and we're going to return it to the main uh, program here and we're going to it'll come back with uh, this value and it's going to put it into valve and then valve will go over and we'll fire our solenoid And we just did. We'll go back here. We've got a two. That's on. It's updated as a value of one. We're returning that parameter. So the return parameter, valve. We update valve. And valve runs the solenoid. Now if I turn this off, and I cleared it. Go to the next product. It's not on. It's not on. Go back to this one and we brought back a value so valve is right now it's a one let's put it this right here we'll go PRD what's the value value is a one come back here let's change the product code let's go to a different product the value is zero value is zero value is zero value is one so that's a basic small package on using jump to subroutines, uh, subroutine input, and then return parameters. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Again, thank you for watching, and please subscribe.